we've had this amazing combination in America. Not only do we think we're inept, we think we're lazy. The average American works a lot more hours than the average German, works more average hours than the average Japanese. We work more hours than our parents did. We're very hardworking people. The 80s was a very special decade. The 80s were terrific. I just wish they'd come back. Everybody won who invested in anything. But now it's, um, it's a whole new ball game. The kind of returns people generated in the 80s are not going to happen in the 90s. And really, if you think about it, the 1980s were the decade of spending. I was out uh, spending it more than I was saving it. I make a dollar, I save 25 cents, which I never did before. Before I made a dollar, I spent three. I think this is a major transition that's occurred in the economy and among the American public, and I don't think it's, it's over. I think, in fact, we're just into the beginning of this long-term savings boom. I've never been a good saving person. I don't like to save money. I don't have bank account. I'm horrible at saving money. If you look at savings rates on a worldwide basis, Germans, I think, save more money, too, than Americans. The U.S. has always had a very low savings rate. We think they spend too much money in U.S. On junk, I think. Really living beyond my means for years now. In Sweden, the idea is that we should have one year income in the bank in case something happens to us. In, in Canada, only three months. <laughs> the public in Japan basically saves 25 to 30 percent of their income. China, for example, is in the mid-30s. In the U.S., the range has basically been between 6 and 8 percent. You have to save 10 to 20 percent a year. You have to or you're, you're being sloppy and lazy and spending too much on clothes. My financial goals would be to have my own ranch. House in Spain, a house in Australia, and mm -hmm. apartment here in New York. Enough acreage to hold a good few horses. Win the Bermuda race. A herd of cattle. Retire and go into archaeology. I have my first cow, so the herd has begun. <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> sure, I think we all dream. I think that's the fun part of life is, is being able to have an, a, a dream that hopefully someday will come true. Well, at one time we thought we were in real good shape, and just one thing after another, you, them savings that you had laid back seemed to disappear. Every day I have to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning, I'm ready to retire. In 20 or 30 or 40 years, depending on when they retire, they are going to have to have enough money to retire on because they're not going to work. I realize that I can't live on Social Security. There's not going to be enough there, enough the style of life that I want. My wife has a 401k. We each have a, a Keo. You have an IRA, right? We both have IRAs. I used to save uh, using bank CDs. CDs are very low. And I just don't think that that's going to get me where I want to be. Marry rich, I don't know. My own financial strategy is based on a day-to-day, -day, a very existentialist type of uh, existence. You know, you, you plan for what? I started planning about maybe 25, 30 years ago. I've been saving uh, most of my life. This is my firstborn, so that now that she's here, uh, there's a lot more pressure. Why? I don't know why I don't have a real plan. One of the things I see in psychotherapy is that people are afraid to take risks. And if they're afraid to take risks in their lives, they're usually afraid to take risks with their money. And what I want to help them to do is to see that you can take a risk uh, if you don't put out what you want, if you don't go for what you want, you're never going to get it. I suppose, like everybody else, we're saving for retirement. Retirement. Retirement, someday. I guess, someday. My retirement will probably come within the next three or four years. I try to take as least risks as I can. Real estate, real estate. That's what I love, it's real estate. We have money in real estate, in stock. Um, I guess real estate, maybe we're not as diversified as I thought we were. <laughs> I collect old cars. I have money in inventory. Some stocks, some collectibles. People spend more time, you know, they'll spend two hours trying to save $50 in a round-trip air ticket to Hawaii. And they spend no time planning their next 30 years finances. It's not that complicated. I mean, you just have to sit down and say, this is where we are. We've got plenty of life insurance if something goes wrong now. Now I have to say, what are we going to do with the incremental dollar, the incremental thousand dollars, the incremental five thousand dollars, where should we put that this year? I spend a little time every week in looking at my portfolio. I always read the business section. I personally do a lot of the reading. What we I, need outside help. You'd have to be very, very knowledgeable to, uh, to do it successfully, I think. What I would prefer to do is have somebody else take responsibility for that. When I say the word stock market to you, what comes to mind? Confusion. Confusion. I don't even know how to read the too much of a gamble for me. It's the only way I've ever been able to make money is by capital gains on the stock market. It's risky for those who don't know it, but if you have some experience, some knowledge of the stock market, you can make a lot of money, that for sure. I firmly believe that over 
any five-year period, I will make money in my, in my growth funds. Over a long period of time, there's very little risk in stocks. This is 10, 15, 20, 30 years. If you own a group of stocks, if you buy one stock, that's like throwing a dart. But if you, if you know something about the stock market, you'd understand that owning a diversified group of, of companies, you're going to participate in the growth of America. You have to recognize that the market cannot go always up. And the important thing to understand, if you think long term, those dips will leave or not. And perhaps when the market dips, that's a buying opportunity. Unfortunately, most people do the opposite. When something goes up, they feel better about it. And so what do they do? They buy more of it. And that's exactly the wrong thing to do, because when something goes up, the potential return down the road is lower. And so if something goes down and it looks really dreadful and the world looks like it's about ready to fall apart, step in and buy. If you can't explain to a 12-year-old in two minutes or less what this company does, you're off to a right, rough start. Because then if the company goes down, how do you know whether to buy more? So you look at this company and say, look at this. I did some research. The company has no debt. They have 20 million in cash. The stock's going down. The business is good. That's great. I'll back up the truck and buy some more shares. There is presently a lot of uh, the news that we're going to be, have a correction in the near future. To figure out the highs and the lows, that's virtually impossible unless you have a crystal ball. People forget that if they get out, if they try to time the market, they get out and they think they're going to get back in at a higher price, at a lower price. Um, you know, they're making the assumption that the stock market has this trend over the long run. This is the trend of the stock market over the long run. An investor that invested in 1986 and 1987 despite the fall in 1987, still has achieved above average returns over the past five or six years. The odds are, the odds are that if you get out, you're going to be getting back in at a higher price further down the road. One thing that has happened over the past year or two is the uh, diversification into global investments. Just investing in pure country funds, unless your spouse works in these countries or you go there all the time, that's just gambling, just to bet on one country fund I think is a mistake. Focusing long term and staying diversified are two important keys to reaching your financial goals with stocks. Sticking to a regular schedule of investing can help you ride out the stock market's inevitable ups and downs. By diversifying with individual securities or mutual funds, you can moderate your risk as you strive for financial success in the 90s.